I feel um, very blessed um, to have this conversation with you. How you define joy. If you take away or erase these boundaries within you, you will see whether you sit, uh, stand or sleep, you will be joyful. Ninety-five percent of the human suffering is all generated from within. Self-help, it's called. Anxiety doesn't come knocking. You are becoming anxious. Hello? How are you? Karam, I was just <laughs> thinking of consulting you how to get these curls like this for me, huh? Oh, you know, <laughs> I was just on Dr. Oz like 20, 30 minutes ago talking about hair. We did like a whole thing all morning about turning back the COVID clock on aging. <laughs> so I did like a hot oil treatment and it was a whole thing. So that's why I look the way I do. I usually don't look this like glammed up for podcast I no, usually have on my wonderful. regular stuff. Why? <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate this. I feel um, very blessed um, to have this conversation with you. Very blessed. <laughs> so let's get started because I don't want to um, take up too much of your time. So I'm going to officially do an intro and then we'll go from there. Okay. And it'll be very, very casual. Okay. I don't okay. know if you know anything about me, but um, I've been on this journey since I was seven. So it's my whole life. It's everything. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of New Growth. I am your host, Nikki Walton, and today I am joined by someone that doesn't need an introduction. He's a rock star guru. <laughs> he, is <laughs> he is the true guru, and it's, it's not the man. It's the transparency that's there that God is can shine through, the love can shine through. I call it love, but we can call it joy, we can call it consciousness, whatever you want to call it, it was before we were. So thank you so much for joining me, Sadhguru, today. This Nikki. is amazing. Wonderful talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so, so I you are the beauty and I am the beast, is it, in this whole game? <laughs> <laughs> the beauty and the beast? No, I don't see it that way. Not at all. <laughs> so, um, I, so I share your stuff on Instagram all day, all of your videos. You're very relatable, very down to earth. Um, a recent one, somebody was like, how do you feel? And you were like, how am I supposed to feel? I feel regular, you know, but I know, like I laughed. And for me, this whole journey has become about, it's like a Easter egg hunt in every moment. I'm looking for the love or the joy that's already in the background. That's always already in the background. In some moments, it's easier. In other moments, it's more difficult. And when I'm really in that groove, there is no me. And there's just that love. Not even the moments. There's just that love, that joy. So I wanted to read a quote from Inner Engineering and just kind of get your definition of joy um, this is the one that I pulled. I have lots, but this is the one I love the most. <laughs> Joy is not some elusive spiritual goal. It is simply the background that is needed for any aspect of your life to unfold magically and wonderfully. <laughs> so I just love to know, like, how you define joy. Well, uh, if you could define it, uh, it would not be worth pursuing it. <laughs> yes, I love that. <laughs> because, uh, see, we're calling it by different names. Essentially, it is life, if it's exuberant, in its exuberance, uh, it may be joy, it may be blissfulness, it may be ecstasy. Well, if it's relatable, it may become love. Uh, these are all different manifestations of exuberance of life. Mm. Joy is not a philosophy that you take on. Like right now, it's become in pursuit of happiness. Where are you chasing it? And why is it elusive? <laughs> because you think it's somewhere else. It's just that this life, when it functions in an exuberant manner, not in a depressed way, in an exuberant manner. That means if you open the cork, it is exuberant. If you close it and keep it, then it becomes depressed. So mm -hmm. what is opening and closing when it comes to life? See, the fundamental thing is this. Well, uh, 
once you've become a human being, what it means is, all other creatures are instinctively bound by boundaries. Like, uh, you may not have seen this in Uni United States, but if you were somewhere else, you would see this. If you were in the wild, you would see it. All carnivorous animals, let's say a dog, if you leave him outside, he goes on peeing all over the place. He doesn't have any urinary infection or problem. He's uh, setting his boundary by his mm -hmm. smell. Mm -hmm. So he's building his own little pea kingdom of whatever. It's a big thing for him <laughs> because for him to be clear what belongs to him, what do doesn't belong to him, he has to set a boundary. But once you become a human being, when I say a human being, in a way, the highest point of evolution on this planet. That means the finest life on this planet must be us. Well, we are proving to be otherwise, that's a different matter. But uh, actually, we are the finest life on this planet, most intelligent, most refined, most capabilities in terms of our faculties, everything. So if this is the finest life, if you look at the longing of this life, what you would see is, Whoever you are right now, you want to be something more than who you are right now. This doesn't stop anywhere. Even if I make you the queen of this planet, I'm, I'm not thinking of that, I'm just saying, okay? <laughs> <laughs> that rock, that'd be awesome <laughs> <laughs> Even if you become the queen of this planet, uh, you will not be fulfilled. You will look at the moon, you will look at the other planets. You will, if I give you the whole, whole solar system, you look at a galaxy. If I give you one galaxy, you will look at the next one. Because there is something within a human being wants to expand limitlessly. So this yeah. is the fundamental shift that happened between animal nature and human nature. Animal nature is always trying to fix its boundaries because its only goal is survival. Once you become a human being, you're always seeing how to expand your boundaries because what you call as human begins to kick in only when survival is taken care of. When survival is in question, we are like any other creature, biological entities of food, sleep, reproductive uh, needs uh, and survival, you know, essentially. So yeah. this dimension of longing to expand is not about more, it wants to expand limitlessly. So, the simplest thing is, if one is not identified with the limitations of one's own physical self, one's family, one's community, one's nationality, race, religion, caste, creed, whatever else, mm -hmm. if your identity is not like a limit on your ability to expand, then life will be naturally exuberant. When it's exuberant, mm -hmm. one form of its expression is joyfulness. So joy is not a practice, joy is not a philosophy, joy is not your ideology in life, nor is joy uh, coming down to you from heaven, because this has happened to the world that all the beautiful things that human beings have, have been exported to heaven. If you mm -hmm. say peace, people say divine peace. If you yeah. say love, they say God is love. If you say joy, people will say heavenly joy. No, no, these are all human things. Your peacefulness, your joyfulness, your loving nature, all these things can happen within you when you are willing. When I say willing, when you are a willing piece of life, you become a willing piece of life only when your identities are not limited. If you put a limit on your identity, then you are willing with one set of people, you are unwilling with another set of people. So in this, it is corked and there is no exuberance to this, but if you take off this cork because this whole thing is just a mental thing that you have fixed up boundaries for yourself, mm -hmm. if you take mm -hmm. away or erase these boundaries within you, you will see whether you sit, uh, stand or sleep, you will be joyful. You will even sleep yeah. joyfully, I'm saying. <laughs> I love that. I, you know, thank you for saying that about sleep. I have heard and read that unless you are, unless that awareness that, um, unless you have that same awareness during sleep, you're not aware of that true awareness. You're not aware as that true awareness. Is that true? And if so, what does that look like? Because when I'm asleep, 
I'm sleep. No, no, when you sleep, just sleep. Huh? <laughs> Don't try to do anything else. <laughs> I go to sleep like with a mantra and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna, there's some piece, some part that's gonna be aware. No, I sleep. And then I wake up and I'm like, well, there was sleeping and I'm, I'm peaceful now, but I don't know what happened during that time. It's like unconsciousness. See, uh, there are too many things, people coming to me and saying, Sadhguru, in which, which posture, should, uh, posture should I sleep? I yeah, said, at, you, at or... least when you sleep, <laughs> give up all this rubbish and just sleep. Sleep just like you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I sleep, apparently. <laughs> yes, that's how you should sleep. You must sleep like you're gone dead. If you sleep <laughs> like this, your uh, duration of sleep will naturally come down because you're sleeping deep. Because the body mm. needs that maintenance time. At that time, mm. Don't try to do anything. When your car is in maintenance, go and don't start the engine, you'll kill somebody. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> Let it be. Exactly. Only thing is, yeah. why these things have come up is, it is just that, see, awareness is again not an effort. It is like, uh, see, what are you aware of, what are you not aware of, simply depends on what is the brightness of your awareness. So we can uh, use an analogy like a light bulb. Suppose uh, you reduce the voltage for a light bulb, it becomes dim, you know. So if uh, the voltage is at a certain level, suppose you're in a room where there are twenty-five people, voltage is so low that you can only see two people. In your experience, you think only two people exist. Mm -hmm. yeah. But if you increase the voltage, you may see five people. Then you'll think, oh, there are five people. But if you put on the voltage full on, then you see twenty-five people. So your whole experience of life is dependent upon or determined by what is the voltage of your life energies. So yes. don't try to be aware. If you enhance the intensity of your life energies with the right kind of practice, then you will naturally be aware. This may also seep into so-called unconscious states like sleep that you become gotcha. aware of that also. But don't try to be aware, all you will have is disturbed sleep. <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. So in the beginning of my spiritual journey, um, it was very much like law of attraction stuff, and I would try to feel exuberant. I would try to feel joyful. And over time, very short time, I learned that it did not work. And I would become aware in quiet moments during meditation or even just kind of sitting and doing nothing of a piece in the background that grew to become at times joyful and